So we need test coverage. Um, I own a software studio in California, in San Diego, called Crafting Bytes. And on the wall at Crafting Bytes, we have the words, um, untested code is legacy code and unmaintainable. And so if you write code that doesn't have tests wrapped around it, that code is expiring and will be more difficult to maintain in the future. And so what we want as developers is a firm commitment to writing unit tests around the code that we release in a production. By writing tests around the code, we are making the code changeable in the future, meaning when we make a change where we break something, we have a higher chance of catching that breakage at the moment we wrote the break and the bug, rather than letting a bug go all the way to production before the breaking change is detected. So the more bugs that hit production, the more user confidence in our product erodes, and the more our developer or our users think that we're idiots and that we don't know what we're doing. So the only way to make sure that changes don't break previously kind of standard and essential features is to make sure that those essential features have tests wrapped around them. Tests are critically important, and we need to be writing tests on all of our code, not just our C-sharp code, but also our database code. So you can write database tests from C-sharp, but you can also write database tests from, from SQL. And one of the frameworks that you can use to do that is something called T-SQL T. T-SQL T is written by a friend of mine named Sebastian. And um, it is just a T-SQL database-centered testing framework. So if I want to use T-SQL T, I can click Downloads. And then here, I can just download T-SQL T. And here it is in a zip file. When I open it up in a zip file, you'll see um, it's just this stuff right here. Right? So I'm going to take that and I'm going to save it to a temp folder. I'm going to put a folder in here called T-SQL T. But there we go. All right. The first thing that you might want to do is make sure your CLR is enabled. So I open that script. And then I come here, and I want to do it in um, you know, that T SQL 2012 database that I used before. And I just make sure that you know, CLR is enabled for the whole thing, right? So I go ahead. And then I take this alter database command, and I put it here, and I just do this for T SQL 2012. And I set trustworthy on because um, T SQL T needs the CLR enabled uh, per database. So then I open a new query, go look for that temp folder, and then underneath T SQL T, I have a script that sets up all the T SQL T components for good testing. So I just run that script. And then I scroll all the way down, and I make sure I don't have any errors. It doesn't look like I have any errors. right? It's all installed. OK. So what happened here is if I go down to that T SQL T 2012 database, it added a new schema called T SQL T. And then if I click on you know, views, I have some T SQL T views. And if I click on programmability, I have some T SQL T store procedures. OK. So in T SQL T, you're dealing with three schemas. The first schema is the T SQL T schema, actual testing framework. The second schema is the test, or whatever you name it, you name this. This is the schema that has your tests. And the third schema is the schema you are actively testing. Like this could be sales, HR, inventory, you know, whatever, right? 
you know, those schemas that you guys create, those schemas would exist here. So by running the script, you can see that I've got the T sql T schema with the framework and all the components here already, right? Um, what I can do it is register a schema for testing. And the way you do that, and if I click here, um, let's look at the documentation. You do that by, where is it? Um, by creating a new test class here. So in this case, the new test class would be test financial app. And that would create a schema called test financial app, and all of your new tests would be in that test financial app um, um, schema. So why is that cool? Well, let's come over here to my T SQL T example. Here, if I go to store procedures, you'll see my T SQL T schema with the framework. You'll see accelerator. That's the schema I'm currently testing. And then you'll see accelerator tests. That's the schema that has all of the tests inside of it. So if I want to run all of the tests in accelerator tests, just type in tsql t dot run all, right? I execute it, and it runs all of my tests. And it says, "Oh look, I I've got a foreign key violation here. Um, you know, there's some something's wrong here, right?" And it says, "I ran 11 tests and nine succeeded, zero failed, two errored, right?" If I look at test foreign key is not violated, a particle color is in color table, I can look for that. Test, foreign key is not violated, this one. And I can right click and I can just modify it. And it says, look, I used a fake table. I had um, a color. Um, I applied a constraint. I inserted a record. And then I want to make sure that when I insert into the color table, that, in that, um, that same thing happens in the particle table. If any exception is thrown, that I want the test to fail. Therefore, the test passes as long as there's no exception. And obviously, there was a failure. So if I wanted to double click that, I can just highlight this and do Shift F5. You saw me do that with SQL Prompt before. And I can see what the actual error is. I don't see an error. That seemed like it worked. So why, why did this error out in testing? Oh, apply constraint cannot resolve the object names accelerator.particle, fk particle color. Be sure to call apply constraint and pass it to parameters. I don't know. There's some error in here. But you guys get the idea, but the relationship between the schemas. You also see, like, if I want to see apply constraint in the definition, I can just click on it, and I can be right here using SQL prompt to see the definition of it. So, um, that's T SQL T. And it, you can learn this. It does a lot. You saw run all. Run all is like very similar to in unit running, right? Um, you saw how it gives me my test results. That's really great. Um, there, there's a lot here. And teaching all this, you know, you'd have to you'd have to spend some time. This fake table is our ability to mock. So we can have a mocking framework like Rhino mocks or some other mocking framework. Fake table will let me like pretend like I'm the customer's table, keep all the same schema. I'm going to add some records to it. I want to do a record count of three. Well, that won't work if there's already 100 records in the customer's table. So what fake table does is it copies off the customer's table someplace else safe. It then fakes that you have a customer's table. It runs all the tests against it to make sure you're inserting, selecting, and doing everything great. Once all your tests pass, it takes the customer's table and copies it back over to the original location um, unaffected. That allows your customer's tests to be repeatable without affecting the actual data that might be in the customer's table. So we're kind of mocking here. And another great feature of T-SQL T is every single test happens in a transaction. And once the test succeeds, it automatically rolls back the transaction. So your tests are repeatable. and 
your tests are not changing data and making the tests you know non-repeatable, right? So um, and, and making it change over time. So that's very powerful. We're very lucky that um, T SQL T does that. Redgate has a quick UI that it built over T SQL T called SQL Test. And when you see it, you can see here are the T SQL T tests. And if I wanted to, I can take this one, like email send if we detect a Higgs boson. I right click and I can run that test and I can just see that test run. If I want to run all the accelerated tests, I can right click run tests. And then the two that failed, I can double click and it will take me immediately into the test that failed. So so SQL test is just a wrapper around T SQL T. So T SQL T is open source. SQL test is released by Redgate. You pay for it as part of the developer bundle. Um, it's just a wrapper around T SQL T so that you can do easy code navigation in and out. And then you get all the other code navigation that you get with SQL prompt. So you can see that there's a lot of power here. Um, and it's my hope that you guys will use these tools and make sure that you're testing all of your stored procedures and your business logic so that um, when you make changes in the future, you know where your bugs are coming from. And really, guys, that's kind of it for training today. I realize that it's only 3.23, but we spent two and a half hours, and I think we gave you a good coverage of the products and what you get with the new tools that you have. Um, hopefully, you found some value.